Mason Buttle by Leslie Connor, Chapter 57, The Big Wrong Piece, pages 253 to 255. The Big Wrong Piece. Tell you what, when something is said, it is said for good. It doesn't matter now that the lieutenant is saying that the handsaw is just something he thinks about a lot and that he would like to know where it is at. I know what he thinks. I'm sick about it. I'm sick that my grandma heard, my Uncle Drum, Shailene. I'm watching the lieutenant go out our door. I see ugly green puffs happening all on top of each other. I blink my eyes. I hear his shoes on the sheet of plywood out there. He's leaving, but he's staying inside of me because I know what he thinks. All the blood in me knows it and my heart knows it with all of the, these dull thuds. Uncle Drum and Grandma are talking about, are talking. They try to comfort. They say they are, they, there are still plenty of pieces to the puzzle. Shailene's voice is there too, but I can't listen. I get up, rush outside. I call to the Lieutenant. It is dark, but I see him beside his car. I say, Lieutenant, I need to tell you something. I try to look at him, but I got this mess of sick green blobs. I try to speak, but my voice cracks. It's hard knowing, it's hard knowing what he believes about me. I say, there have been a lot of times I have talked to you and listened to you, and you say something and I say, yeah, to agree, because it seems rude to say that you are not right, but you are not. You have things wrong about me. There is a big wrong piece in your puzzle. I see him nod. He says, I would like for that to be true. The trouble is, Mason, I have to draw all conclusions on my own. You were the last one to see your friend alive. There that is again. Makes me sound special, but it is not. He says, but you and I have a problem. I feel like you don't give me much to go on. You have the notebook and you don't even have to write it by hand anymore. I told you the typing is fine with me, it's fine. I know the Lieutenant is right about that. It takes me down to nothing but a whisper. I say, I'm sorry, I am too now and then about it. I am that way about a lot of things, he says. And see, it's more important than that, Mason. Finding out what happened to Benny should matter most of all. The lieutenant tells me to think that over. When he drives away, I wait there. I start to think about all the sad to see you faces in Miramac. I see them, Andy and Franklin, and the clerk at Bischel's Hardware, Irene in her hairnet, and Stuart at the grill, Margie up at Calvin's house, all of them. I think this, it is not just the lieutenant who believes all this bad about me. I see dark on dark out here in the night. I blink, then taste a splash of salt. I put my hand in my pocket, close sweaty fingers on the loyal rock, smooth and round. I pull it out, draw my arm back. I wing that rock across Swaggerton Road. I hear it hit pavement somewhere not far up on Jonah Gold Path. I go back inside, walk past my supper, on through the stairs. On through to the stairs. I cannot look at Uncle Drum or Grandma or Shailene, not even when they call my name. I go upstairs to the bed where I sleep. I roll up small, small as a kid my size can be, and I close my eyes, dig my fists into, my, into the sockets, and I sweat and sweat, and my heart pounds, sicker and sicker, because I get it now. All the sad to see you faces are not just about me being Benny's friend and losing him. There are people who think I did something awful. They have been thinking it through two apple seasons. All this time, I have been too stupid to know that.